on off to tell me we're live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live this morning and I just want to say good morning and welcome to our morning devotion. Uh, Randy will be with us momentarily. She's getting her cup of coffee. So get your cup of coffee and get ready to start because let's share a cup of coffee and a story from God's Word. I don't really like that term story because it kind of implies that it's um, something made up, but it's not. It's God's Word. Even though today, as we look into more of Jonah, we will be uh, hearing quite an incredible fishtail. Uh, however, the difference is, is that this fishtail happened. Yep. Not only did it happen, but it could have happened as well. They have determined that, yes, it is possible for someone to be swallowed by a great fish and survive. A lot of these big, big, big fish have gullets or places where they might swallow air or, or whatever. And it, either way, um, I believe it. So I'm going to leave word it right it. that way. God words, God's word says it, and so I believe it. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Lisa. So glad to have you guys join us this morning. And I saw some text from Scylla. I hope everybody's okay. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful weather outside. Lord, thank you for the freedom to worship you and to praise you and to share, Lord, your word. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging us. Lord, thank you for healing us. Thank you for keeping us safe. Lord, thank you for the right mental outlook, God, that we just have the ability to look toward you. Thank you, Lord, for walking with us every step of the way and being with us. Lord, thank you for caring for us. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless this time, and that it would enrich our souls in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. No licorice today, <laughs> but we are going into Jonah. Yesterday, as we looked a little bit in the beginning of Jonah, we realized that Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. He went to the absolute furthest place away from Nineveh that he could possibly go. Uh, and he hopped in a boat and he, he headed out away from Nineveh. He wasn't going to do what God told him. So yesterday, yesterday's title was Jonah Runs. Today's title is Jonah Swims. Um, this is how this, the, the, the Bible lesson, the devotion this morning goes. And it has a few points in it that we're going to look at. But Randy's going to read verse 4 and 5 for me real quick. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, sometimes when you run, you're just oblivious to what the repercussions are. Mm -hmm. It says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay, and was fast asleep. Amen. <laughs> That's for Don and Scylla. Don Scylla. They have no sound uh, on their phone. Uh-oh. Yep, so that's that's for you. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> sticking, sticking. sticking funny. So, the Lord sent out a great wind. Jonah was on the boat, a great wind. The, the, the word there that the Lord sent out literally comes from a, from, from a term which meant to hurl, like, like like you would to to hurl a cast net, um, so or or like a medicine, one of those big heavy balls that you hurl. It. God hurled a great wind into the sea, and there was a tempest. There was crazy waves. If you've ever been on a boat, a lot of times they make boats and they carry the the hold and the stuff in the boat, and when it goes out carrying the load the boat sits lower in the water so the, there's chances that bigger waves Wings. can come over. 
So they were in a boat. It was on its way to, to Italy, to, to this, this place, and it was called Tarshish, which uh, he went and fled unto Tarshish. So they were having problems because their boat. This is the thing. It said that Jonah, everybody was praying, everybody was calling out to their gods, nobody was answering, they didn't know what to do. And it, meanwhile, the guy who caused all the problems <laughs> is sleeping down in the side of the boat, fast asleep. Sleep. Not just snoozing, but fast asleep. I, I don't know about you, but I, I sometimes could use a little fast asleepness. <laughs> um, but this could be also a spiritual thing. Thinking about the spiritual thing that when he was fast asleep, Jonah had no clue that his disobedience to God was overlapping into everyone else's lives. Causing a turmoil. It was causing a turmoil and peril and actually physically putting the lives of other people into danger. When you run from God and you're not doing what God wants in your life, it's not just gonna affect you. For dads and moms, it's going to affect your kids. Yep. It's going to affect the people that you work with. It's going to even affect the place that you work. Your boss might not be blessed because you're running from God. Mm -hmm. Your family may spend time in strife and turmoil and storms may be coming and everything's going crazy and you think you're just, just going to die because you're running from God. Now, I don't recommend running from God. I have, uh, over over the years, had friends who ran from God. And when they ran from God, there was a mess in their life. Yeah. And there was a mess in his life. But he was sleeping, and it was messing up everybody else, too. See, when you're blessed by God, that blessing overflows into the people around you. Amen. And when you're not, that overflows into the people around you. Read verse number six. It says, So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. One. Seven. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. The cast lots is like little tiles with everybody's names in it. Put everybody's <laughs> names in a hat. Let's just throw them out, and we'll see whose name comes out. Guess, who, guess whose name came out. So um, they they said everybody should be be praying. Everybody to their own gods. So they, they had all kinds of different people praying to different their, their different gods. And then here's a guy sleeping down there. The captain or the captain, the shipmaster, goes down and says, "Hey." Hey, sleepyhead, wake up, <laughs> wakey, wakey. There's, this, there's, you better start praying. All the rest of us are praying. What's wrong with you? Well, Jonah knew exactly why <laughs> things were going wrong. As soon as he woke up, he's like, what's going on? He goes, oh man, he, he knew. Here's the thing, you can run from God, but he knows where you are. <laughs> you can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. You can't hide from God, and you can't hide from yourself. So if you're spending time running from God, and your life is in misery, and things are falling apart constantly, and there's financial ruin, there's mental ruin, there, there's physical ruin, no everything peace. is going wrong, there's no peace in your house, you're, you're running, you can't hide from God. When He's put a calling on your life, you need to adhere to it. Amen. And let me tell you, he has called everyone to live more like Jesus. That is, that is our calling. We are supposed to be Christians. Christian comes from a word which means Christ-like. I know we fall so far short of being like Jesus. But that's not the point. The point is, is that we're going to try. We're going to make an effort. But when you stop making that effort and you start running yeah, away, really you don't want to be in church. You don't want to hear worship music anymore. You don't want to hang around your Christian friends. If your parents are Christian, you don't want to hang around them. You, it's just simply put, you don't want to read your Bible. 
you, you, you flick right past the preachers on TV, and, and pretty soon you're embracing the exact opposite. You're hanging out with friends who are taking you out to bars, and you're drinking, and you're getting drunk, and you are doing drugs, and you're carousing, and you are in the exact opposite place. You, you can't hide from God, but you can't hide from yourself either. Every time you look in the mirror in that state of mind when your life has fallen apart, you know why. Because we serve a God who cares enough about you that he's going to tell you where you are. You can run. Can't hide. But you can't hide. <laughs> Verse number eight. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? Keep reading. And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Then? Or, then were the men exceedingly afraid, <laughs> and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told, told them. them. They were afraid. You see, because there were rumors that the God of Israel... Yep. There's a squirrel. There's an angry there's squirrel a up there. And there's a woodpecker, too. And there's a woodpecker up there, too. Um, he jumped to the other tree. Okay, he's going to his nest. That's good. So funny. They're mad because the, we put bird seed out and they can't we're get sitting right here now. and they can't come because the squirrels like to steal um, the little pieces of corn that are in there. So he's angry up there and calling down at us, letting us know he's angry. The sailors had heard and known that the God of Israel is a God who may call down in anger. And I'm sure that they heard the, the stories of Israel yeah. and the stories of the Red Sea and yes. the stories of Pharaoh and the Israeli armies conquering yeah. people. So when they found out that this guy was a believer and followed the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. and he was left and running from the presence of God, they were afraid. Mm -hmm. But they're not, they they're, they were afraid for their own lives. I mean, they're like, okay, thanks a lot, buddy. You know, nothing like dragging all your junk into here. It's kind of like the person who walks into a crowded room and they're towing a, a skunk behind them and they don't even know it. Uh -huh. You know, and pretty soon everybody in the office is like, really, you had to bring that in here? Uh, or a dog, you know, he, a dog will come into the bedroom and you all know how dogs do. And, and next thing you know, everybody's like, oh, uh, yeah, Duke. Uh, don't bring your snake to somebody else. So, picking up at verse number 11. Okay. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may come unto us? For the sea wrought and was temptress. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Amen. Yep. This, is, this is it. So he said, the tempest is upon you. None, nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not. For the sea, for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. So no matter what they tried to so do they to get tried. back to land. I mean, they tried, they understand. <laughs> I mean, they, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people, they would have said, okay, I'm the, don't hesitate, throw him overboard. It's his problem, chunk him out. He said he said to do it, I mean, might as well, chunk him out. Uh, but no, the, these people even had a, 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 a reverence. Okay. There were prophets of God in the Old Testament that when people came against them, really bad things happened. Uh, one of the prophets, they came to capture him with a whole army, he prayed, the entire army went blind. Uh, he led them all into prisoner of war camp, gave them lunch and sent them home. Um, so people understood that there were there were all kinds of prophets. The prophets of Baal, bah, not so much, didn't. But prophets like Elijah and Elisha, oh, fire could come down out of heaven. So don't mess with them. So they tried, they said, well, maybe we'll get some brownie points with God. Let's try to get him in. They tried. 
So it wasn't it wasn't just that. It was tough times for everybody because of one person's disobedience. And it was affecting everybody around him. So tough times for all. Verse number 14 lies a key for something for us to do when we run into troubles. Read verse 14. It says, Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done it as it pleased thee. Keep going. So wait, 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 wait. Pray when you don't know what else to do. Pray. Good morning, Roxanne. Morning, sis. Um, the pray and God will take care of things in okay. your life. Prayer is what you do when you don't know what to do. So they prayed. Now they were no longer praying to the pagan deities that they had or their gods, little g's. Now they began to pray to the Lord because they realized who specifically to pray for. And we need to know that when we have a problem, we have the right person to go to. We have the right person to go to. It's kind of like going directly to the owner of a company. I don't want to talk to a supervisor. I don't want to talk to a manager. I, I, I need access to the owner. And they had they now were addressing him. First they number. Were, yeah, and they were kind of like in the same situation as Pontius Pilate. It's like God had a plan. Pontius Pilate was going to have to give Jesus to be crucified. Barnabas could not, or what was that? Yeah. Uh, Barabbas. Barabbas couldn't be the escape one. Amen. Just like they couldn't row to shore because God had something he needed to do with Jonah. So they said, you know, lay not upon us innocent blood. They didn't want to be responsible for Jonah when they threw him overboard. Yeah. That's what was their fear was. You their know, we fear. don't want to be the one responsible for killing a prophet. We're doing something to a prophet of God. Not just any <laughs> old prophet, but a prophet of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Uh, they, they were afraid. So That's the, why they asked for that. You if know? you don't know what to do in a situation, pray. Pray God would tell you. Well, God told Jonah, you, you better throw him overboard. Get him out of the <laughs> ship. And the people tried to save him. They tried to find an alternative way around, but it wasn't working. They tried to row. They couldn't row. It, it, it took prayer. And so, in verse 15, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. I just want you to think about that. They chunked him overboard, and the sea stopped. The storm Calm. stopped. <laughs> when you finally start to do what God wants you to do, calmness will come. Read verse 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Keep, Keep going. One more. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. The Lord prepared a great fish. That's why they couldn't go to shore. <laughs> That's why. It, uh, here, here's, the, here's the deal. Here's the real thing. You need to stop running from God, or you might end up swimming, and then you might end up getting eaten by a great fish. Mm -hmm. now, you can take that however you want, but let me tell you, swimming, swimming in an ocean of despair leads to drowning yeah. in an ocean of yeah. despair. You can only tread water so long. And if you've ever been in the ocean, there's other things in there that will eat you. Yeah. But God, it's not just any fish. It says God prepared a great fish. Amen. Now, there's the little debate there as to whether it was a whale or whether it was a great white shark. Uh, or whether it was a special fish that it, it's it, God prepared some giant sea creature it says fish yep. that swallowed them uh, I'm sure to them whales were were fish mm -hmm. even even back then you have to understand they 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 weren't studying you know the animal kingdom and say well there's mammals and and, <laughs> and, and whales are mammals and because if you'd have told them back then that whales are mammals and they're 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 the same type of uh, animal as like a cow or a goat they'd have laughed you silly uh, <laughs> you understand that so it was a great fish here's the thing that you need to do as we close out this morning you need to stop running from God if God has called you in your life stop running stop running from God and start running to God 
you wouldn't be in this, the mess that you're in had you just ran to God in the first place. When you get into a mess in your life, go to God. When you have problems in your life, bring them to God. When you're in a mess, bring it to God. If you've been living in a life that you know that is contrary to the Word of God, if you've been living in a life where you know that you feel convicted about the things that you're doing, bring it to God. Bring it to God, bring it to God, bring it to God, and you lay it at His feet and you leave it with Him. Yeah, and don't have resentfulness, you know? Don't have this uh, bitterness toward a person because it was that bitterness that he had toward the Ninevites that was keeping him from what God wanted him to do. It's like, no, God, you know, I know you're a God of mercy. I know what you're going to do. <laughs> you know, and he was upset. He was mad at these people. He didn't want to have to bless them. But... Yep. God God works. That's Jonah chapter 1. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly yep. Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Yes. Father, I pray right now that anybody that is listening that feels like maybe they've been running from you, that it feels that maybe they are in the middle of a really bad storm, that they feel that their life is in peril, that they feel that there's a no-win situation that they are facing, that they feel that they just have to be thrown out. God, we're not trash. And God, even if we are cast overboard into the sea, you have a plan. You have a plan that is beyond our comprehension and beyond what we can understand. So I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would reach out to these people and give them faith yes. to put their trust in you. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. If you don't have peace, won't you pray today with us one last Amen. prayer and repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for what Jesus did. Father, let your peace be in my heart. Jesus, I'm sorry for the things I did. Help me to live for you. I'm sorry I've run from you. Help me to run to you. Wash us, cleanse us, and make our sins as though they never happened. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen. I'm going to close with Proverbs 16. Um, Sarah, I don't know whether you can see or not. Uh, Proverbs 16 is what I'm going to. Uh, verses 17, excuse me, 16 through 20. It says, How much better is it to get wisdom in gold and to get understanding rather than to be cho rather to be chosen than silver? So wisdom is better, understanding is better than gold, than silver. Knowing the Lord, the wisdom that comes from Him. It says, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. Amen. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Amen. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before the fall. Better is it to be in a humble spirit with the lowly, than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Amen. Back to joy, back to happiness. Amen. It's found in following the Lord and living with a heart that seeks him and that's after him. He will give you peace like Amen. you've never imagined. Peace that this world can't give and money can't buy. And a joy that's deep inside, that even in the middle of a storm, there's still that you and God, you know it's all right. Amen. So, blessings, keep a praise song in your heart. Like we always say, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. rejoice. Amen. Love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you.